What's going on, my boys? Today is the day that we take a look at Jesse Cotton's and Andre's uh, YCS Sacramento performance. Um, I'm going to tell you guys some interesting facts that you never have thought about before. Um, I've been looking around and I've been seeing what people's opinions are of this match. And as I have always seen, pretty much gravy train, absolute dog water, either people are going through the position of play by play talking, yapping, just yippity yippity yapping about this uh, matchup, just talking about how Andre was just trounced, you know, and don't, and, and listen, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right here, right now, you're gonna get a little bit of that from me, cause yes, he was a victim. However, there is so many more nuances to talk about from Jesse Cotton. He is a infamous figure in the Yu-Gi-Oh community. One of the most prominent figures in the Yu-Gi-Oh community. And his methods and techniques are not exposed to the public. And I'm exposing it right now. I'm gonna tell everyone why Jesse Cotton was successful in this match specifically and likely why he was successful in every single match preceding that um jesse does get a two round buy like he gets two free w's in any of these events so that is a substantial advantage but on top of that jesse has other advantages that are beyond just his gameplay and that go beyond his deck. And that comes with his clout, that comes with his stature, and that comes from what this duel actually meant to him in the greater context of his Yu-Gi-Oh career and Andre's Yu-Gi-Oh career. For Andre, this was his very first shot at being YCS champion. So for him, it's everything. But for Jesse, he's literally the Seto Kaiba in this situation. Jesse is the reigning champion. Jesse is the one who needs to be defeated and literally faces off against an upstart, someone who's looking to basically dethrone him in a way. So it's an interesting psychological dynamic uh, going on on top of this amazing clash of go first versus go second decks. But as you will see, Andre was not prepared for this duel at all, but Jesse was hyper geometric. All right, my boys. So as we move further into this chat, we're gonna talk about Jesse's deck and how it breaks down. Jesse's deck is not like any other deck that um, you typically face. Most people don't look at decks the way I look at decks. So I'm gonna tell you how I look at decks, how I'm breaking down his deck. You can obviously read my notes here, but let me explain and give me a little more time here to elaborate. So please, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you right now to lock in and continue listening. Now, right now, Jesse plays a deck that everybody knows. It's the Snake Eye Fiend Smith deck. But you as a viewer and listener do not have to know or learn anything about the Snake Eye Fiend Smith deck, except know this one thing. It is a one card combo deck. Since it's a one card combo deck, it's easy to break down this deck to key cards as one card combo key cards, which are cards Jesse needs to do to utilize going second to build his board to potentially win the game or going first to build his board to lock his opponent out so that he can potentially win the game. So depending on when he's going first or second, the cards that are relevant that need to be played, technically you have some cards that are sleeping in the deck on the first turn. So these relevant cards fluctuate. So Jesse's deck is extremely powerful going first or second, but Jesse's deck is secretly organized to go second and not first. 
Although you might think it's organized to go first by the hand traps. So allow me to explain. On the first turn, Jesse plays a deck of 47 total cards. In this deck of 47 total cards, there are two garnets. He uses these 47 total cards um, with 45 usable cards, first or second. And then he has two garnet cards that are buried in, these, in this. So he's running a 40 seven card deck that's technically a 45 card deck but the, but the utility in these 45 cards are amazing because of triple tactics talents as you can see in my little uh figure above you can see triple tactics talents present in the turn one setup and triple tactics talents set up in the turn two setup turn two setup meaning I'm going to try to break my opponent's board and win. Turn one setup is I'm going to try to set up my board and, uh, uh, you know, and, and prevent my opponent from playing. Or if he's not going first and he's going first in his opponent's turn, he has 19 cards that are live going um, first. But then, you know, with those 19 cards, that triple tactics talents that is in his hand is something that he utilizes and plays around with his hand traps. Because as I've watched Jesse's games, Jesse pretty much manipulates his opponent through many different things. And it, and it may be unconscious, you know, and I would definitely say it's probably subconscious. It's, I wouldn't say it's like intentionally Jesse's trying to intimidate them. But you can see how Jesse sits down. He is definitely like a Mike Tyson thing. I've talked about this many times on my stream where Mike Tyson will come up to someone and he basically does a soft intimidation by, you know, inquiring about their health or tiredness or whatever the case may be. But Jesse doesn't do that. Jesse sits at the table and he can see that his opponent is pretty nervous. He tries to make things very casual. But as soon as they start the game, he locks in. And as a person who used to play Yu-Gi-Oh! at Locals and as someone who returned to Yu-Gi-Oh! and played against someone who was a champion and I had the upper hand and I was going to win the set with DDD at the time. I forgot what the main deck was, what the meta deck was, but I remember the pressure when he was side decking. I remember when um, Makanex got the advantage and took his key monster and that decided the duel for me. I remember when I activated DD Recruiter and and that was, and it took his last starter. His, he, was, he was trying to get the last little play started and I used DD um, Recruiter and took it. And I remember doing that and, and remembering how strong of a play that was and how amazing that felt someone like jesse cotton has done that millions of times jesse cotton or not well you know you know what i'm saying tons of times jesse cotton has done this in um many different settings as well you know low stakes and high stakes as well and also i believe at the time of this event this was his he was already at four tops or four wins or or four YCSs or, or something like that and this was his fifth or something like that it was fifth or sixth I don't know it's something like that it, but for him it was a notch on the belt and because that was the case for him he's the big dog he's got more uh in, more power more clout so in these situations where if Jesse comes in and Jesse's very standoffish and and kind of villain-esque kind of mean you know what i'm saying kind of rude it's easy to discard him psychologically and to to walk away and just get your head in the game because andre's head was not in the game andre got shook he got shook and i will talk about that in the commentary later on but um because you couldn't vilify jesse and he's a nice guy he's a youtuber you might watch his content you know you kind of are softened up in his presence when he's nice. But when the duel starts, 
He's locked in and you're being manipulated by the cards. And what card are you being manipulated to? Jesse is routing you. Jesse is encircling you with his cards to get you around triple tactics talents because Jesse gets two distinct advantages on triple tactics talents. If he's going first, if he's actually playing into creating his board and you try to use a hand trap on him and, and to stop this deck, you need about two to three hand traps potentially if jesse can punish you with triple tactics talents that man will look in your hand he's gonna take a card <laughs> and he's gonna get you because once jesse gets knowledge on what you're playing he's so well practiced you can't beat his knowledge so the only way you can beat jesse is if you hide information from him and jesse knows this which is why he runs three triple tactics talents and because he runs three triple tactics talents it changes the hypergeometric distribution rate for his deck going first or second. And because if he opens with triple tactics talents, his routing strategy is changed. You know, if he opens with talents, then he's basically routing you with his hand traps to get you in a position where you'll have a little bit of board. He won't stop everything. You'll have a little bit of board. You will be encouraged to activate an effect and he will talents you. <laughs> or or he doesn't open with talents and he just opens with three hand traps you're dead <laughs> so this is pretty deadly um so by so by me telling you this you understand how he has an advantage going first but you know obviously going second it's a board breaker and it gets him right into his one card engine so basically going second he's running 26 cards to go second and going first, he's running 22 cards. So what this means is going first, he has a 68% chance of drawing what he needs, a live card to route his opponent, a 68% chance. But if you force Jesse to go second, because you're on a go second deck, Jesse has an 88% chance through hypergeometric distribution and 80 eight percent chance of getting his full combo online 88 percent so when we look at andre's deck he's running a go second deck that is not calibrated for blowout it's calibrated for hand traps so in my mind it's a soft go second deck because a soft go second deck is running these hand traps to get the opponent to stop playing. He's, he doesn't want the opponent to play anything. And after he gets them from playing anything, he wants to bombard them and rush them and win the duel. And it was very successful up until he got to someone like Jesse Cotton. Because Jesse Cotton had way more on his side against Andre because of all those things I mentioned before, the psychological, the clout, the, the, you know, the stakes, everything else. But also, Jesse had mathematics on his side. He had the hypergeometric distribution on his side. And the triple tactics talents gave him a distinct advantage regardless of the coin toss. Because as I told you, Jesse's deck is deceptive, is secretly built to go second, that means Jesse's deck is built to lose the coin toss. So since Jesse's operating in the negative, he will be positive on every single coin toss. Just like I am when I play Master Duel with my Go Second Gladiator Beast deck. But unlike your boy, Andre is running a hand trap variant of his Go Second deck with blowout hand traps don't get me wrong his hand traps like um uh uh shifter and nibiru don't get me wrong but but the key difference between andre's deck and jesse's deck 100 percent is the triple tactics talents and also that jesse's decks is 47 cards versus andre's 40 cards because what 
Andre ran into in the finals, as you will see, is the hyper consistency issue where he's over calibrated to draw the correct cards he needs because basically he got tilted. So let's go ahead and get the commentary going. Jesse is competing for his sixth YCS. His title. sixth. Yeah, and his, his opponent today in the red chair, flying all the way from Sussex. <laughs> look at him. He's very Andre nice. Look at him. Delary. Look at him nice. Look at him. He look at the, the look at this shy little smile. He looked at him. Look at him. He's like, YCS oh, title. he's like, <laughs> what a delicious snack sacrifice. <laughs> yes, Jesse's all like right. it's time. <laughs> we're gonna fast forward this a little bit. We've seen so many different decks. Minutes in this so we're gonna see how this goes. So, extra minutes near the finals, though. If the semifinal matches were anything to go, or Jesse go. First, sorry, I misspoke, but you know what I mean. But anyway, but here he goes. Jesse's gonna start with wanted that diet bell star to play around drawing Lockbird, but Andre has Malcharmy All right, Perilia. This so Malcharmy Perilia. So Malcharmy Perilia, if you didn't know, is basically like a maxi, but it works off of normal summons and special summons from the hand. And it has like a maximum on the amount of draws it can have. And then also you can get two going at the same time, which Andre does get going. But also um, what's interesting here is basically resolving Snake Eye Ash under this card is kind of Kind of funny because primarily it's a kind of an even trade for Jesse because Jesse has again what I told you triple tactics talents in his decks and he's got a strong chance of opening with triple tactics talents due to the distribution so going first he's got a 68 percent chance of opening with at least one card of his key cards and three of those key cards is triple tactics talents so Again, it's possible that he can open with it anytime. But Jesse does well to, to get people nice and set up. But also, he does get to draw from his deck from lots of different cards um, that uh, that are in his combo line. So his combo line allows him to draw. So that allows him to get closer to talents every time he... There's the talents. So talents, let me look in the hand. And Andre takes the deep breath. The deep breath of the tilt. This is where the tilt starts. When he shows him his hand, and he sees that he's overclocked in engine. Look at his hand. It's full of engine so far. He hasn't drawn into He doesn't play board breakers. He's looking to draw into hand traps. There's no Nibiru there. There's no shifter there. There's nothing. So Jesse knows now if he stays within a certain caliper of play, he can prevent him from powering up even further and basically control this duel so he sent away the only other card that he could have used which was the bestial monster which was andre's only response so now andre has no response and only engine and i think one card that he can summon is that dora dora which is the key starter or one of the key starters but jesse's going to be able to set up a board here to make sure that he can't do that so let's just get up to that point all right so here's another thing before we get to that point where we get to end of turn because basically Jesse's just cooking under um, that Mocharmy card and and making sure that he keeps his summons to a point where he doesn't advance Andre's gameplay at all. But because he used Triple Tactics Talents, he has perfect knowledge of his hand. And now he's going to resolve this card to draw. But basically he's kind of making a mistake here but the way he draws he puts it face down and he's corrected by the judge now i know personally i would have been disqualified right here i am li if i was jesse and i was cooking like this and i went to draw i probably would have just drew and looked at it already and then the judge would have been like an irreversible uh state and then you know the game is over but jesse draws like a professional because again he's well practiced again that was my point jesse even makes sure that in his mistakes he's correct so again, he draws with the card down, and then he's corrected, and then he's like, oh, puts it back. No problem. But uh, again, so let's just go ahead and continue back to that, to that part where I... There's a lot of thinking to do here because he knows Andre's hand. Definitely. So he is going to. So Desiree and I. All right. So here you go. Andre draws for turn in that same way I mentioned that Jesse draws. And then he did not draw anything good. He drew into engine again. Hyper consistency is not good in a deck. 
And then also because he's running a 40 card deck, it's a higher chance of something like that happening. But unfortunately, you know, because Jesse was able to look in his hand and then the Molcharm the Molcharmy card was played around, he wasn't able to utilize anything to really get his plays going. So Jesse's going to just basically prevent his gameplay and then of course win the duel uh because of that and then we're gonna have to go to game two so let's just hop to game two all right here we go um now jesse and andre are about to get started um andre primarily side decked into more hand traps and then jesse primarily side decked to go first so primarily he side decked in his stuff like um called by the grave and um uh designator so basically yeah andre has got two copies of nibiru but um jesse did open with those cards that i mentioned so jesse's going first and andre tries to hit shifter and then jesse hits get look right here call by the grave. look at andre look at andre look at andre look at andre Actual tilt. You just watched that. You can see when the wave of tilt blew over Andre. It was overwhelming. I felt it. And, and he played called by the grave. And you got to look at that. That is a that is like an ultimate rare or some kind of high rarity called by the grave. Called by the grave is limited to one in the TCG. So it's going to feel like tilt. But I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to tell you something right now. Because Jesse knew that he was going to go first and added those cards. Because the difference between 68% and 88% is literally two cards. No. It wasn't luck. It wasn't skill. It was hypergeometric. That's why he had it. Because it was either called by the grave or the designator. One of four cards, not one of one card like called by the grave which is why andre is doing this if you watch any of these duels no matter where these people are no matter who they're playing against when they're tilted they can't they can't not do this you know you you have the quote-unquote unsportsmanlike conduct you can't display in these duels so when people get tilted this is all they can do is look sad <laughs> but this is how you look on master duel so i ain't even you know i ain't even gonna front so i'm just saying this you know is cooked and i don't think you can surrender really until like it's your turn or something like that or there's some kind of rule or something or maybe i'm mistaken i don't know but also in the finals i wouldn't want to scoop anyway but also, Jesse's winning right now, not only because he is mathematically in a position to win, but also Andre is tilted because he didn't play board breakers and he went into board breakers with hand traps, meaning I'm waiting for my opponent to do a specific action so that I can use a specific card. Like he's got Imperm, he's got Nibiru, but you're going to see that the Imperms and the Nibirus and the shifters and all that wasn't enough because through all of this, Jesse's just going to keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Because his whole deck going when it's Jesse's turn is an 88% chance of him being successful. It's an 88% chance of him being successful over no matter what you have. Because basically you're trying to trade with his cards. And you can't trade with his cards because Jesse's running tactics. And tactics Another is a defining factor. Tactics, if tactics takes at least one match, that's enough. Tactics doesn't have to win every, to win it be in every game. Tactics needs to take one game, and it took the first one. And losing the first game to someone like Jesse in a live match as your first uh, attempt at becoming YCS champion, I think that's pressure, right? Right? I, you know, if, if nothing else, that's pressure. But the pressure being exuded from the the moment, the pressure being exuded from Jesse, the pressure being exuded from the tilt of tactics, the tilt of called by the grave. Andre is not in his head right now. 
Andre Andre is on Nibiru right now. Andre is not in our in our orbit. Andre's out of here. And, and it's basically because Andre was over calibrated for this duel. Got unlucky on the first hand. Then then after the tactics and the perfect knowledge. Then you're just getting outplayed. He does have that second he got, first, he got unlucky. Then he got outplayed. But the only person who got any type of luck was Andre. And it just so happened to be bad luck. But the person who actually didn't get luck, the person who made their own luck, was Jesse. Because Jesse decided on the side deck, made a decision. I'm probably going to go first. So let me go ahead and add the two to four cards that I need to put in this deck to take my distribution rate from 68 to 88. And when he did that, he was successful in pulling. Guess what? Call it by the grave. <laughs> now, we don't know what he exchanged, but basically, you know. You know, called by the grave and and designator were side deck cards, and then also Andre did side side deck and cards like Cosmic Cyclone to get rid of Temple. But then again, it's like, yeah, that's that's okay, sure, in a couple interactions, and I'm sure that's pretty work worked off pretty well. But I wouldn't want to go for a one for one against an opponent like Jesse Cotton. I need blowout cards that I can control to defeat Jesse Cotton. You can't beat Jesse Cotton if you're waiting on Jesse Cotton to fall into your trap. You're already in Jesse Cotton's Mingekio Jutsu. Like, you're already in his Genjutsu. You're already locked in. You were locked in when they said, match, final, Jesse Cotton and Andre. When they said that, that's when the Genjutsu began. And Andre could not escape. He could not escape. And regardless if Jesse knows that this is exuded from his uh, stature, from his clout, from his win record, you know, from his presence in the uh, overall zeitgeist of Yu-Gi-Oh, regardless if he knows this or not, this is happening. So there's a psychological and a mathematical um, yes, he may have co point points, though. that Maybe that comes the, together the to, get out of this. to put so much pressure in this duel. Andre cannot he win. He, does pass. he oh, cannot win. The top deck the so game. basically, Andre, look, now in the last the duel, face. Andre didn't Exactly didn't draw hand traps. He drew too much oh, engine. But right. now, in this duel, he's drawn too many hand traps and can't get engine. Because guess what? Andre is not in distribution. He panicked when he went to that side deck and turned his ratios out. He panicked when he went to his side deck. And when I looked at his side deck, he only had two blowout cards, and I think it was Droplet. Two blowout cards in which he would have control. And those blowout cards, Droplets is not all that great because Droplets make you get rid of resources. So unless you immediately recoup those, it's not all that great. So what's happening here is Andre lowered his chance at victory when he went into his side deck. And Jesse increased his. So in a normal situation where it's an 88% chance at victory, I would dub five to ten percent additional. So now you're looking at a ninety-eight. Now you're looking at you know potential like ninety-three, you know ninety-three to ninety-eight, ninety-five in the middle. So if you're looking at a ninety-eight percent chance of victory, going second after the first match, you're looking pretty fucking good, man. And it and it's playing out in real time, and you're watching him lose. And so, and again, this is not to like disparage anyone or talk bad about Andre or to, or even to rub Jesse at all. It's basically to explain how mathematics, how distribution rates, utilizing hypergeometric distribution, utilizing key cards, takes you directly to victory. And then other factors increases your chances. Look at Jesse. Look at him. He like, yep. <laughs> yep. And look at then he made this. Look at the smile. The smile's like, yeah, 
Sorry, had to do it to him. Look, he just look, he just looked back. I had to do it to him. <laughs> yes, look at him. He's like, yep. And then he's like, you know, and what's messed up is Andre just wants to get the fuck up out of there. And I would too. I would want to get the hell off the stage. I would want to get off the stage. Now Jesse's going to be like, well, let me get up and get another trophy yet again. He's going to make one of those thumbnails be like, champion says this. Champion reacts. Champion, etc. And hey, he deserves it. Because guess what? Not only did Jesse use hypergeometric distribution, but Jesse utilized his clout, his skills, and everything as a duelist, truly embodying the spirit of Aseto Kaiba. So, as I'm saying here, as I said before, as I am doubling down saying now, Jesse was the Seto Kaiba when he walked up, and Jesse's the Seto Kaiba when he walks away. Just look, look at him. He's like, yeah, I cooked him. He's like, take a look at it. <laughs> He's like, yeah, cooked him. Yeah. He's like, yeah, had to do it to him. And and, and this and 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 for Jesse, it's kind of also one more funny thing to say about Jesse about this thing. Also, something has to go through Jesse's head. I know for sure. Jesse's definitely got the thought in his mind. Damn. You know, I hate that I had to do it to. The guy on his first up. But Jesse's prominent. He can't lose. Like, like Jesse, like, like literally can't lose. Like he can't throw the game. He won't throw the game. He, he better not throw the game. You know what I'm saying? And since he can't and won't throw the game, and this is just what happens to be your first time. <laughs> didn't didn't Jesse FTK some kid on stream? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He said on Kaiba. He, but he's nice enough not to tell you you're a third-rate duelist. But he'll beat you down like you're a third-rate duelist. So that's it, my boys, for the Think Phase podcast. Please make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. I'm going to be taking a look at more decks and talking about the hypergeometric distribution and how that works in Yu-Gi-Oh!, you can utilize that by checking out my video on hypergeometric distribution in Yu-Gi-Oh! Or you can just head to duelistgpt.com, identify your number of key cards versus other cards in your deck, and ask my AI, Duelist AI, tell me the hypergeometric distribution rate of drawing at least two cards in my opening hand. And then there you go. And then that's how you're going to get your rate. All these rates here that I talked about was Jesse opening up with at least two. And at least two plus Jesse's skill is more than enough to take you down.